So we will take up this last unit, direct stiffness method of analyzing the frame structure, that is plane frame structure. That is, plane frame structure means it includes work, continuous beams, then plane pressures as well as rigid plane frames. Scissor to be analyzed only in a rectangular rigid plane frame. You can analyze even in plane length rigid plane frame also. Of course, press you will get implied members that already you have taken care by taking into direction cosines of the members. So here in direct stiffness method, this is gives a general procedure. So using I would prefer so that the computer can be straight away used in the analysis. The steps which we have to follow in the direct fitness method, it can be easily programmed on a computer. So in any language, program language, you can use it either MATLAB or you can use uh, uh, your other languages also. Any photo on the latest also you can use it or any standard package you can use it. They will follow this direct stiffness method. So in this direct stiffness method, first steps to be followed, I can give you the general steps to be followed in the analysis. To be followed in the analysis for all types of problems, same steps are to be, are to be, are to be followed. The first step, given a structure, we have to choose a suitable origin for the structure and you have to just find, identify the joints, identify the members, identify the supports and identify the nodes on the structure. This information will be there before analysis and those things you have to prepare yet list. The first you have to select with reference to with reference to a Cartesian coordinate system. Cartesian coordinate system. With reference to a Cartesian coordinate system with suitable origin with suitable origin. Preferably, the origin will be selected as one of the joints of the structure itself. So with suitable origin, determine, determine the coordinates, determine the coordinates of all the joints of the structure, joints of the structure. So that is the first step. So that is nothing but joint information. Joint information. All the information with respect to joints. For example, suppose if you take a truss or a beam, a truss or a beam. Suppose if you take a truss like this, for example, if you take a truss like this, so this is a truss given. So the joints are these four points, A, B, C, D, are the joints. So, you have to select, I will select the origin as this point A. Like that. This is, with reference to an origin, that is A is selected as origin. With this origin, we have to determine the coordinates of all the other joints. So since this is taken as origin, coordinates of origin A is 0, 0. So then coordinate of D, because it is 4 meters, so this will be, the x coordinate is 4, y coordinate is 0 for the 
joint B. Similarly, for joint C, the x coordinate is 4, y coordinate is 3. Then for joint D, the x coordinate is 0, y coordinate is 3. 0, 3. Like that, you have to determine the coordinates of all the joints. What is the table structure? So even if you suppose if you take a beam tabla like this, a beam is given A, B, C. So you can select A as the origin like this. This is your coordinate axis, that is global coordinate axis. Right? That is X and Y. So with this coordinate axis, coordinates of A is 0. Suppose you take beam span. 6 meters and 4 meters, then coordinate of B will be 6, 0, coordinate of C it will be 10, 0, like this. So, like that, even the dictates them also. So, whatever the structure which is given, so that structure you select, and you select a suitable origin. You select preferably the coordinates are all positive. Like that, you select the origin. If I select coordinate uh, origin here at D, then this uh, D coordinate, it will get scored and the value will be negative. So, like that, preferably not to choose that point as the origin. Preferably, you choose the origin such that the coordinates of all the points will be having a positive value. That is not compulsory, but preferable. It is preferred. So like that, keep that thing in mind. You select a suitable origin. With reference to the origin, you find the coordinates of all the joints of the structure. That is the very first step, joint information. If you want, you can prepare a table, joint like this. There are four joints, joint one, Joint 2, Joint 3, or Joint A, Joint B, Joint C, Joint D. Either way you can select A, B, C, D and coordinates like this, coordinates. X coordinate, Y coordinate. For A, X and Y are 0. For B, X coordinate is 0 y coordinate is 3, for c, x coordinate is 4, y coordinate is 3, and for d, x is 4, y is 0, like that, you can have a table. So, whatever table in the number of joints which are there in the structure, are those joints you can identify with letters like this, a, b, c, d, or with numbers. Either you can select 1, 2, 3, for like that also you can identify the joints or with like as A, B, C, D you can do it and you find the coordinates. Preferably with same units. I have taken here, there are in meters, I have taken only in meters. Preferably you follow the same units throughout your calculation. That's the very first step. Then second step is member information. Member information. You have to collect the information of the members given in the structure. Like the joints, you have to find the number of joints J. You have to find number of members M. Always in the structure given, you are able to find the member information. So here, member information means important things you have to remember here is. Because each member, you know, generally it has two ends, I told. Left end and right end. So which is left end, which is right end, of course there is no set rule. Always you have to take right end as the first end one and left end as the end two. Like that, there is no rule. Or left end, you select it as first. And right end and second end, that kind of rule is not given. Any end, you can select it as 
node 1, node 2. Because for each element, this identifying the first node and second node, or identifying first joint and second joint is very important because the direction percent has to be calculated and direction percent will be calculated from 1 to 2. That is, your local axis, local coordinate axis will always be selected from first point to second point. That is your local coordinate direction. So since that condition is there, the local coordinate condition always it starts from the first node. Which is the first node to be selected? Is purely in your hand, but you have to stick on to the same information. So that information you have to follow here. That is member information. So you can prepare a list like this, member, as this. So here, suppose if you take this first problem, there are how many members? One, two, three, four, five, and this also will be okay. So there are six members of there, that is member one, two. Either they call it as A, B, or one, two. Either they can call it A, B, or one, two. That is member one, two. Then member one, three. Member one four. That is member two three. Then member two four. Two three two four. Then member one three over three one is there. Then member three four. And that we can have all the members, then write the end one of the member, then end two of the member, that we have to identify two. So for member A, B, end one is one, end two is two. You can select first as this, second as that. Then for member this one three, one three is nothing but your member AC. This is AC. For N1, you can select it as one, N2 as three. Then member one four. One four is nothing but your AB. For this also, you can select this N1 as one and then two as four. That means they are the positive direction. And the element coordinate always runs from one to four, one to three, one to two for all these members. For two, three, the end one will be two, end two will be three. The two, three is BC member. For BC member, you can select no end one as two, end two as Three. Likewise, for two four member, then two you can select it as one, and this has four. And for three four, either you can select say it's four, and this has three. I told you there is no rule. Always three to be selected as first, then one, then two. Like that, anything you can select it, but identify that which is then one, which is then two. Then you find. The, uh, this is N, I will call it as N1 as K, N2 as K, member as I. I is running from 1 to M, M number of members. Here, J, N, and K of the members. Then you have to find the N. That is direction percent. Then is nothing but x k minus or length of the number you can find out. L is equal to square root of x k minus x j whole square plus 
y for a k minus j for a of the whole square. So from that formula, you can get this number interpreted. Then of the member. If you can straight away k, take it. Otherwise, you can, because I told you, this will be programmed on the computer. So it is inclined in any angle. So that particular thing, it will be computation will be easier if you generate a general formula like this. So here, L of the member one row I will show, tell you the example here. So that is xk means x of coordinate of 2, x2 minus x1. x2 minus x1, put find out that these coordinates are 1, 2, 3, 4 x2 minus x1. x2 is this, x1 is this. This is second joint, first joint. That's called the 0 minus 0. It is 0 minus 0 whole square. Then y coordinate, that is yj minus yj means it is y2 minus y1. That is 3 minus 0. 3 minus 0 whole square, that is 9. Square root of this will be 0 plus 9, that is square root of 9, it is 3. Automatically, let 1, 2 is 3. Suppose if you take, say this, 2, 4. 2, 4 length, we have to find out. So 2, 4 length is nothing but x4, xk means x4, because this is kn I told. This is kn, that is x4, minus x2, x4 minus x2, x4 minus x2, that is 4 minus 0, 4 minus 0 whole square, then yk, now yk minus yj, that is y4 minus y2, y4 minus y2, that is 0 minus 3, plus 0 minus 3 whole square. So this is square root, that is square root of 4 square 16 minus 3 whole square 9, that is square root of 16 plus 9, 25, square root of 25 is 5. So this length of the number 2, 4 is 5. Like that automatically you get it. So you have to give this formula to the computer and automatically will compute. So whatever may be the inclination. That's why it is a general procedure I told. Hitherto what the problem people, they are all either a line horizontally, either horizontal line or on a vertical line. But if it is inclined, then this formula is helpful for computation of length. You can do it. So that is that. That's why this in this embedded information, all this then one, then two, the moment this you identify from this joint information coordinates you can use and compute the length. Then you can find the direction cosine here, which is given by xk minus xk divided by length L. And by direction cosine cy, that is L, is nothing but yk minus yk by L. So in the member information, you have to take all the members, then you have to identify which is N1, which is N2, that is left hand and right hand, that is local coordinate you have to define, then you have to find the length, then you have to find direction for size. This direction for size is nothing but again, if you take this member A, A, B, what is the direction for size you have to select? L for square root this. That is xk minus xj. For member 1, 2, xk means x2, xj means x1. That is x2 minus x1. x2 minus x1 is 0 minus 0. That 0 minus 0 is 0. Divide by that here, that is again 0. So naturally, direction percent of the member KB, that is first direction percent L, that will be zero for this. Naturally, the vertical member, its inclination with respect
respect to horizontal axis in the entry degrees, cosine 90 is zero automatically. Similarly, the, the, the direction to send m of this member is nothing but yk minus yj, that is y2 minus y1, y2 minus y1, that is 3 minus 0, 3, divided by length, length is 3, 3 by 3 is 1. So naturally, m value of that number, 1, 2 is 1. Easily you can compute the direction for sense with this member information. For joint information, with reference to a joint selected, then all the member information. That is, in the member information, you have to identify the joint 1, joint 2, to fix the local axis, then you have to compute the length of each member, then you have to compute the direction to sense of the member. Because I told you this is a generalized procedure, which is applicable for inclined leg member analysis also. Hitherto, you are assuming all members to be orthogonal. And that is at 90 degrees to each other. But if the member is inclined, then you have to follow this procedure. This can method can be applicable for all types of member in orientation in the structure. So that is another thing you have to remember. Then you have to find out this year value and the year value. Both the I as well as the value given in all the members you have to take it. So this much information you have to select in second step. Joint information, that is coordinates, member information, it is mainly direction for science. So this much information you have to collect in the second step. Then third step is you have to find the unknown displacement or degrees of freedom. Because it is stiffness method, you have to determine the degrees of freedom at all the points. Degrees of freedom that you have to identify. So, degrees of freedom, that is the third step which you have to find. Here, for example, so if you take that stress problem, here you told, I told you in stress member at each joint you have two degrees of freedom which are possible. So you have to identify that like this. So these are the joints one, two, three, four, so. You have to say join, you have to say one, two, three, four, then you have to say displacement, displacement, yes, displacement, y displacement. There are two displacements which are possible, so that you have to identify. So a joint one, it is hinge joint, no displacement is possible. You have to say both x and y displacements are zero. And joint two, here both displacements are possible. So you can call x displacement as d1, y displacement as d2. Then at 3, both displacements are possible, call the tag d3, d4. You can go on giving numbers continuously like this. d3, d4, both are possible. Again, a joint 4, it is hinge, no displacement is possible. So, if you prepare this degrees of freedom, that is restraint at each joint, so you can find out degrees of freedom. What is the degrees of freedom? Unknown displacement, it is 4. D1, D2, D3, D4. So in our earlier problem, we were identifying the coordinates, these unknown displacements. 
one, two, three, four global coordinates you are uh, identifying, whereas here, in direct stiffness method, straight away we give joint information, member information, and degrees of freedom which are possible. Number of degrees of freedom, GDOF, general degrees of freedom. Sometimes it is also part of GDOF, general degrees of freedom. So, which are the displacements which are possible, so that we have given. That is the mention. All this are only data given. Even suppose if you take this beam problem, so if you have this beam problem, then here you have only three joints, joint one, two, Three. So at each of these joints, you know there are three displacements which are possible, horizontal, vertical and rotation. But we assume members to be axially in shape, so that means all these horizontal displacements are not possible. So we are taking only the rotation, that is y displacement and rotation, only that we take x displacement, we take it as 0 because we assume members to be axially in shape. So here, this y displacement, it is like this, I will take this as d1. Then here, d1, which is of course it is not possible because it is fixed n. d1 is not possible. Here, vertical displacement again, not possible, 0. And 3, vertical displacement, not possible, 0. Then, rotation, it is not possible here. Here it is possible, that is a joint 2, theta 1. Here, it is not possible. Here, joint 2, theta 2, it is possible. So, naturally, here, the degrees of freedom is only two, that is two rotations. Like that, you have to identify. Either you can make it as theta 1, theta 2, or d1, d2. Either you can call it as d1, d2, two unknown displacement. Like that, any problem, any frame, multi story frames, whatever it is, so this you prepare a list. Joint information member information, then degrees of freedom. Then, fourth step, you have to find out the element stiffness. KM. You have to generate, for all the elements, you have to generate the stiffness matrix. So, you know that this is given by KM for press element is given by AE by L and minus AE by L minus AE by L and AE by L. This is the stiffness matrix for plane press element. This is standard one, A equal L, 1 minus 1, minus 1, 1. That you have to. This, all the informations are known. Member 1, 1, 2, we can calculate A equal L, A equal L, because A is not here, length we have computed, so this KM1 we have to, we can compute. Like that, KM2, KM3, KM4. All the members, whatever you want, for all the members, you can compute these stiffness matrix. So here, this with reference to this unknown displacement. So here, suppose if you take member one two, here this a e by l, a e by l, they are corresponding to this zero and b two coordinate. D1 is 0, it's also 0, so others have to identify 
the element coordinates also there in that. With reference to that element coordinate, you can just determine all this. While determining this element coordinates, the first coordinate is here, is always the end one. Second coordinate is always the end two. So whatever the end one and two you have defined here. With reference to the end one and the end two, what are the displacements which are there here? The end one, the end two, what are the displacements? That only you have to take. Here it is one, two. One, you don't have displacement. Two, also you, two, you have displacement E1. That's why I told here it is with respect to zero and D1. This element is matter. Straight away it can be taken there. By identifying each of these elements in matrix or in computer, it will be stored with a name, with row and column. Identified I and J. That's why this way of identification, it is always you have to do correctly. So again, for plus element is this, even for B element, the member stiffness matrix is given by B L by L into this is 12 by L square minus 6 by L minus 12 by L square minus 6 by L then 4 and 6 by L and 2 and 3 by L square 6 by L and 4 then it is symmetric this is the element stiffness matrix for B member. B. X ready to B. X ready to be B. So that is, you have you are taking the N1, N2, so with these degrees of freedom. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this axis of 1, 2, 3, 4 for that member. Like that, member 2, it is having different degrees of freedom. N1 and N2 are different and these degrees of freedom also will vary accordingly for other member. These informations, joint information or nodal information will be different. This correctly you have to generate for each element with the corresponding degrees of freedom you have to generate the element stiffness matrix correctly. That is your step 4. For each element from the information given in step 2 which is N1, which is N2, what are the degrees of freedom? Both you have to take it and like the stiffness matrix. Then fifth step, find total structure stiffness matrix. Total structure stiffness not matrix. The total structure stiffness matrix KS is given by ED or RT, KM, or This R matrix, that is rotation matrix, so is L, M for a first member. It is rotation matrix is this. Likewise, for actually it beam. This is for press, for B member, for B member, which is excellent, that, that is beam of plane frame, which is plane frame. You can take the rotation matrix like this. And, and Zero, 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 one, like that. So this 
can depend on of course this side derived in the next classes and then it can work problem. So this rotation matrix you have to calculate for which is excellent, which is not excellent, which is or actually not rigid also and rest element. Knowing this protection matrix, you can calculate KM also, protection matrix also. Knowing these two, the KS value can be computed. Knowing KS, you can find DS, that is displacement, general displacement. Because that you can determine from this formula, ps is equal to ks into ds, and you have to generate ps matrix that is load matrix. Load matrix also you can generate corresponding to this kinematic indeterminacy that is load given. Here, that's the value you can generate, and determine from that you can compute ds. After finding the DS, you can come back to this four step element stiffness matrices. And if using that element stiffness matrix PM is equal to KM into DM. This we can convert into DM matrix through this transformation matrix and we can arrive at that PM. PM and DS the moment you compute the analysis will be over. So again, the same seven steps, whatever I have dictated. Up to here, there are one and first three steps, they are different. Here, joint information, member information, degrees of freedom. Then from here onwards, four, fifth, six, seven, that is whatever you have followed in transformation matrix approach, that same steps you have to follow. So the first three steps will give you a generalized procedure for computing this KM matrix as well as this transformation or uh, displacement transformation matrix or as well as member stiffness matrix. So using this you can compute structure stiffness matrix and the moment structure stiffness matrix is generated then you can compute the displacement from this relating hip, post displacement relating hip and again knowing this displacement in global coordinates, you can use this displacement transformation matrix to compute memory and displacement and again use this post displacement relating hip for members, local coordinates and evaluate for each member in memory and forces. So that is a generalized procedure which we follow and that will be very clear if you take an example and start doing it. And these steps are directly programmed on a computer. You can write a generalized program to start with to get all this information and all this information the moment you feed to the computer it will compute element stiffness, it will compute this transformation matrix, then it will compute using the principle of contrapositives, it will compute this structure stiffness matrix and then it computes displacements and membrane process and you will get the output straight away. Whatever may be the number of members, you can do this exercise from element 1 to element n, number of elements, you can compute this in a repetitive manner in a loop and calculate for all the numbers separate. And assemble total structure thickness matrix. From that you compute the unknown displacement, then take out each member separately and with that force displacement relation for each member you can evaluate the member length force. That's the general procedure we follow in direct stiffness method and actually working we will do in terms of problems one by one.